famous Ethiopian painters. Afewerk Tekel. Afewerk Tekel, the 22nd of October 1932 to the 10th of April 2012, was an Ethiopian artist, particularly known for his paintings on African and Christian themes as well as his stained glass point one. Born in Ankoba, in Shewa Province II, to Felikech Yamatawerk and Tekel Marmo, Afewerk grew up under the Italian occupation during the Second World War. Following the war in 1947, Afewerk decided that he wanted to help rebuild Ethiopia and elected to travel to England to study mining engineering. Before departing, Afewerk, together with other students leaving to study overseas, was addressed by Emperor Haile Selassie. Afewerk recalls being told, you must work hard, and when you come back do not tell us what tall buildings you saw in Europe, or what wide streets they have, but make sure you return equipped with the skills and the mindset to rebuild Ethiopia. Afewerk had already shown talent as an artist as a child, decorating several walls in his hometown. Whilst at boarding school in England, this talent was recognized and encouraged by his teachers. As a result, Afewerk was persuaded to switch from engineering and enroll in Central School of Arts and Crafts in London. He then went on to the Slade School of Art where he studied painting, sculpture and architecture. Returning to Ethiopia as a university graduate, Afewerk could have accepted an assigned ministerial post, but instead decided to spend time traveling around the provinces of Ethiopia to get more experience of his native country and culture, which he reflected in his paintings. In 1954, he held his first one-man show in Addis Ababa, at Municipality Hall 2, that gave him the funds to travel around Europe for two years where he learned how to design and construct stained glass windows. He also made a special study on Ethiopian illustrated manuscripts in the British Library, the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris and the Vatican Library. Back in Ethiopia, Afewerk opened a studio in the National Library of Ethiopia. His growing recognition led to government commissions for murals and mosaics in St. George's Cathedral, Addis Ababa, and several of his designs were used on the national stamps. He was also commissioned to produce sculptures of famous Ethiopians, although only the monumental statue of Ras Makonnen in Hara was completed. Most notably, in 1958 he designed the stained glass windows in the Africa Hall of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa in Addis Ababa. The three windows cover an area of 150 square meters, and represent the sorrow of Africa's past, the struggle of the present, and hope for Africa's future. In 1961, Afewerk held a major retrospective in Addis Ababa, which led to his painting Maskell Flower being shown at international exhibitions in Russia, the United States and Senegal. Increasing funds allowed Afewerk to travel around the continent of Africa. With much of Africa still emerging from colonialism, Afewerk became fired with black emancipation and the struggles for independence. This is reflected in his paintings of this time, with titles like Backbones of African Civilization and African Unity. In 1964, he became the first laureate of the Haile Selassie I Prize for Fine Arts. As his reputation spread abroad, Afewerk was invited to put on an exhibition in Moscow following which he toured the Soviet Union giving lectures. The American government responded with an invitation for one-man exhibitions in Washington, D.C. and New York and a similar lecture tour of American universities. Additional international exhibitions followed in Senegal, Turkey, Zaire, the United Arab Republic, Bulgaria, Munich, Kenya and Algeria. Through much of the 1970s, Afewerk was engaged in producing murals and mosaics for many public and religious buildings around Ethiopia, including the mural Last Judgment in the Adigrat Cathedral in Adigrat, Tigray. In 1977, his painting Unity Triptych won the gold medal in the Algiers International Festival. The early 1980s saw a second major exhibition in Moscow and an exhibition in Bonn. In 1981, his painting Self-Portrait was the first work by an African artist to enter the permanent collection of the Uffizi Gallery, Florence, Italy. In 1997, he exhibited at the Biennale of Aquitaine, France, winning first prize in the international competition. He was also nominated as the laureate of the Biennale which gave him membership of the French International Academy of Arts. Afewerk Tekel had membership of the Russian Academy of Arts, so he became the first African member in 1983. Notable works. Ras Mekonnen Monument. Walter Cross 1959 at Royal Chapel in the Tower of London, England. 
Murals and Paintings at St. George's Cathedral, Addis Ababa. Maskell Flower, 1961. The Last Judgment, 1970, Mural in Adigrat Cathedral, Tigray. The Victory of Ethiopia, 1979, at the Hero Center in Debrazei. The Chalice and the Cross in the Life of the African People, 1997, Study for Stained Glass Entered in the Biennale of Aquitaine. Mirror Paintings in Ethiopia ECA Headquarters. Skunda Bohazian. Alexander, Skunda, Bohazian, July 22, 1937 to May 4, 2003, was an Ethiopian-Armenian painter and art teacher. He spent much of his life living and working in the United States. Point three, he was one of the first, and by far the most acclaimed, contemporary black artists from the African continent to gain international attention. Point four. Bohazian was born on July 22, 1937, in Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, one and a half years after the Second Italo Abyssinian War. Point two three, his mother, Wazero Sadale Wal Tekel, was Ethiopian. Point three, his father, Kozrof Gorgorios Bohazian, was a colonel in the Kiba Zabagna, imperial bodyguard, and of Armenian descent. Point three, Kozrof's father, Gregorios Bohashan, an Armenian trader, had established a friendship with Emperor Menelik II and worked as a traveling ambassador in Europe on behalf of the Emperor. Point five. Bohazian's father was active in the resistance against the Italian occupation and was imprisoned for several years when Bohazian was a young child. Point three, his mother had set up a new life apart her children and although both he and his sister Asta Esther, visited their mother frequently, they were raised in the home of their father's brother Kathig Bohashan. Point five, Kathig, who was serving as the assistant minister of agriculture, together with other uncles and aunts brought him up during their father's imprisonment. Point five. He attended a traditional Kest Timherd Betok kindergarten where he was taught the Jerez script. Point three in primary and secondary school. He was taught by both Ethiopian and foreign tutors and become fluent in Amharic, Armenian, English, and French. Point three he studied art informally at the Teferi Mekonan School. Point six he also studied under Stanilas Chonaki, a historian of Ethiopian art and watercolor painter. Point six. As a teenager, an African-American neighbor not only gave him his first feedback on his drawings, but introduced him to jazz, and throughout his life jazz was often playing in the background as he worked on paintings. He claimed jazz to be a very heavy movement of the 20th century. It is not one person. It is not one thought. It is a combination of genuises. The constant modulation of concepts. It is the one thing we have, black folks, as artists. Point seven. Bohazian was married to Marily Price, but later ended in divorce. He has two children, Aida Mariam and Edward Adesu, a sister, and four grandchildren. 168 Bohazian died on May 4, 2003, at Howard University Hospital in Washington, D.C. He was 65.1. While he spent some time in Paris, Bohazian talked often about political and cultural influences, citing Franz Fanon, Aimé Césaire, Sheik Antigiop and well as creative forces in modern art like Paul Clay. Not very well-known painters like Gerard Secoto introduced him to the Gred Cuban surrealist painter, Wifredo Lam. He also worked close with a group of West African artists. Point seven. We can even see the radical politics of black power and the black arts movement in the United States and how they seem to have inspired his paintings with coded and overt political themes, such as Black Emblem, 1969, The End of the Beginning, 1972, and DMZ, 1975.9 His involvement with the black arts movement impacted his work in more ways than just one. His earlier paintings depended on the combination of biomorphic forms and minutely detailed abstract notations, he populated the spaces of his new work with bold, polychromatic, geometric, and African motifs. Point nine. Taking a look at his heritage, Ethiopia has a long tradition of wall painting in churches and of illustrated manuscripts reaching back to the 8th century. It is from this cultural fountain that once included three fourths of ancient Egypt, the builders of the Great Pyramids and the Cradle of Civilization, that the drew inspiration from point one oh he also mined his early childhood memories. Coptic markings in biblical art, illuminated church manuscripts, and ancient scrolls to stamp iconic signatures thick and crusty, flat and smooth, on canvas, hardboard, bark cloth, aluminum or paper. Point four. 
When considering his art as a whole, he really focused on color being used to illuminate, to create superimposed dimensions of form and shape, which in turn enables the viewer to first see the painting as a unit, then as a simultaneous breaking up of images, and finally as a recognition of the identities. Point nine, he wanted his viewers to look at his paintings and make up their own interpretations, all the while imagining the figures on the canvas being brought to life, rather than just being placed on there. He greatly valued the importance of rhythm in his paintings. Point nine. Bohazian won second prize at the Jubilee anniversary celebration of Haile Selassie I in 1954.11 The next year he was granted a government scholarship which allowed him to travel to London to study at the St. Martin's School of Art, Central School of Art and Design, and Slade School of Fine Art, and two years later to Paris, where he studied and taught at the Académie de la Grande Chaumière. In 1966 he returned home, teaching at Addis Ababa's School of Fine Arts until 1969. In 1970 he emigrated to the United States, first to Atlanta, where he became acquainted with the Black Arts Movement and taught at Atlanta's Center for Black Art, then he moved to Washington, D.C., where he taught at Howard University from 1972 until 2001.9. Bohazian was the first contemporary African artist to have his work purchased by the Musée d'Art Moderne in Paris in 1963. In 1966, the Museum of Modern Art in New York acquired his painting Juju's Wedding, 1964. In 1977, he became the first African to design a first-day cover for a United Nations stamp. Point one two, he was commissioned by the World Federation of United Nations Associations. Point one two, his pen and ink drawing on the theme of combat racism, for the cover and the accompanying stamp were issued on September 19, 1977.12. In 2001, Bohazian worked with Kebedek Teklib on a commission called Nexus for the Wall of Representation at the Embassy of Ethiopia in Washington, D.C. 13 The work is an aluminum relief sculpture, 365 by 1,585 centimeters mounted on the granite wall of the embassy. Point one three Nexus includes decorative motifs, patterns and symbols from Ethiopian religious traditions including Christianity, Judaism, Islam and other indigenous spiritual practices incorporating symbolic scrolls and forms representing musical instruments, utilitarian tools, and regional flora and fauna. Most recently, Bohazian is represented in New York by the Contemporary African Art Gallery. Point one. The Umbrella Organization for Ethiopia's Oldest Secular Schools is named after him, the Skunda Bohazian College of Performing and Visual Arts. Haile Selassie First Prize for Fine Arts, 1967.14. Contemporary African Painters, First Prize, Munich, Germany, 1967.14. 29th Annual Show of Black Artists First Prize, Spelman College, Atlanta, Georgia, 1970.14. District of Columbia Certificate of Appreciation.14. United Nations Special Committee Against Apartheid Certificate of Appreciation, 1984.14. City of Miami Beach, Florida, Certificate of Appreciation, 1985.14. Ethiopian Embassy's Excellence Award in 2000.8. Exhibitions. Contemporary Ethiopian Art at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of African Art.8. Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris.15. National Museum of African Art in Washington, D.C. 15. The Studio Museum in Harlem.8. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs Building in Addis Ababa.8. Agegna Huengida. Agegna Huengida, 1905 in Mardir Mayam 19501, was an Ethiopian modern artist. He blended abstraction, expressionism, and surrealism, but maintained a style that was distinctively Ethiopian. 2. As part of Emperor Haile Selassie's education program, Agegnehu was granted a government scholarship to study at the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts in Paris, France from 1926 to 1933.2 After his return from Europe, Agegnehu held many art exhibitions. He also worked on commissions for military uniforms, Burr currency designs, church murals and portraits.2. In 1941, Agegnehu became the assistant director of Ethiopia's new Department of Fine Arts in the Ministry of Education and Fine Arts.2. He died of unknown causes in 1950, shortly after finishing the painting Twelve Donkeys.3. 
Few works by the artist are known to survive today. Point four two of his portraits are housed in the National Museum of Ethiopia, a self-portrait and a portrait of Asta Mengesha. Point two. Martha Nasabu. Martha Nasabu, born 1931, is an Ethiopian writer and artist now living in France. Her patronymic also appears as Nasabu. The daughter of Nasabu Zemanuel, she was born in Addis Ababa, moved to Italy in 1936 and studied at the Académie des Beaux-Arts in Paris and the Art Students League of New York. Her first exhibition of work was organized by the Ethiopian Ministry of Education and Fine Arts in 1945. Nasabu was a founding member of the Ethiopian Artists Club. She lives in Pepinyan. Her art is included in the collection of the National Museum of Ethiopia. 123. In 2005, she published Memory di una principessa Etiope, which describes the invasion of Ethiopia by the Italian fascists. 3. Kebedek Teklib. Teklib attended the School of Fine Arts in Addis Ababa, becoming active in the student resistance movement during the revolution late in the 1970s. Fleeing Ethiopia, she became embroiled in the country's war with Somalia, being imprisoned in a labor camp for close to a decade. She was released in 1989 and emigrated to join the family in the United States, receiving her Bachelor of Fine Arts in 1992 and her Master of Fine Arts in 1995 from Howard University. She produced her punishment series of works as part of her thesis project, Humanity in Descent, Visual Images of Human Suffering, Point 1. Teklib has taught at SCAD Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia, and Howard University, in Washington, D.C. She is currently teaching at the City University of New York, in New York City. In 2001, Teklib worked with Alexander Bohazian on a commission called Nexus for the Wall of Representation at the Embassy of Ethiopia in Washington, D.C. Two, the work is an aluminum relief sculpture, 365 by 1,585 centimeters, mounted on the granite wall of the embassy. Point two, Nexus includes decorative motifs, patterns, and symbols from Ethiopian religious traditions, including Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and other indigenous spiritual practices, incorporating symbolic scrolls and forms representing musical instruments, utilitarian tools, and regional flora and fauna. Point 2. Niccolo Brancalian. Niccolo Brancalian, c.1460 after 1526 was a painter born in Venice, whose art left a clear influence in Ethiopia from the reign of Bidamayam onwards. During his lifetime in Ethiopia, he was commonly called Makarawas. Evidence of his life before arriving in Ethiopia has not been found, according to Paul B. Henzer.1 E.A. Wallace Budge, in his preface to the second ion of his translation of the Kebra Nagast, claims that Brankelian was a monk who had come to Ethiopia to convert Emperor Zara Yaakob and debated Abba Georgius several times on religious matters. 2. Wallace Budge may have misremembered James Bruce's statement about Abba Georgius's opponent in that religious debate, we are not informed of the name of Abba Georgius' antagonist. But he is thought to have been a Venetian painter, who lived many years after in Abyssinia, and, it is believed, died there, explicitly identifying him as Brancalian in a footnote. Point three, Francisco Oliveras, who met Brancalian while accompanying the Portuguese ambassador on his mission to Levna Dengel in the 1520s, wrote that they say he was a monk before he came to this country. Point four. Brancalian arrived in Ethiopia between 1480 and 1482, according to an account of Francesco Suriano, who had visited the country, written in the latter year. When he arrived at the court of the emperor, who was at the time encamped at Bara, which OGS Crawford located to the southwest of modern Addis Ababa, Suriano found 14 Europeans residing at the court, among whom was Master Niccolo Brancalian. Point five. By the time Oliveras met Brancalian, the painter was very wealthy and well known in Ethiopia, although forbidden by the emperor to ever leave the country. By this time, he had founded a studio and was unchallenged in his skill at painting icons, illustrating books, and decorating churches. Brancalian's images of the martyrdom of St. George and of the miracles of the Virgin Mary remained fashionable until the 18th century. 6. His best-known work was a painting of the Madonna and Child that decorated the Church of Atron Samayim, which caused much controversy. Beckingham and Huntingford, in their notes to their translation of Oliveira's account, repeat the account from the Paris Chronicle that Brancalian's work gave great offense to the Ethiopians because the child was held in his mother's left arm, the left being considered to be of lower status than the right. 
but there are many Ethiopian pictures in which the child is carried in the left arm, and it may be that in this case he was really shown in the right arm, which seen from the front might be described as the left seven. The painting, however, survived for several centuries until it was destroyed in 1704, along with the church, by an Oromo raid. In 1973, the traveler Diana Spencer discovered some examples of Brancolian's works at Wafa Yesis and at the nearby monastery of Getasarmani in the Goncha Gorge, including a work by a previously unknown Ethiopian apprentice. Henza reports that he and Stanislaw Chonaki verified that these works survived the Derg era. Though much has been learned about Ethiopian religious art in recent decades, it is still a challenging field where important new discoveries are likely to be made. 1. Geba Christos Desta. Geba Christos Desta Nego Geba Kirisitosi Desita 1932-1981, also Gebre Christos Desta, was an Ethiopian artist and poet. Point one two he is cred with bringing modern art to Ethiopia. Three both his paintings and poems stirred controversy among his country folk. Point four he died young. At 50, as a refugee living in the United States, but despite his short life he transformed Ethiopian art influenced many a young artist. Geba was born in the town of Hara, the son of a high-ranking clergyman Aleka Desta Nego, and was the youngest of six siblings. His father worked for Ras Makonnen, the governor of Hara at the time, and was tutor to his son Ras Tafari Makonnen who was later crowned as Emperor Haile Selassie, the last emperor of Ethiopia. Point five. Geba Christo spent his youth on regular activities like playing soccer and volleyball he also spent a great deal of his time under his father's tutelage copying and illustrating religious manuscripts, while assisting his father as an apprentice. His early influence and introduction to art, was the traditional religious art of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Point six. He completed his elementary education in Hara and attended the Haile Selassie I Secondary School, and graduated from General Wingate High School. Early in his 20s Geba Christos developed a skin condition that altered his skin pigmentation. Point seven, he would spend the rest of his life searching for a cure but would ultimately be unsuccessful. Point seven, 90 percent of Ethiopia's population is in agriculture, so naturally Desta was encouraged by his family to become a professional farmer. Geba chose not to pursue a career in agriculture but instead spent his personal time reading about art and painting when and where he could. Geber was a self-taught artist until his sophomore year in college when he left his study to pursue becoming a professional full-time artist. Point eight, in 1957 he earned a scholarship to study art in Cologne, West Germany. He graduated top of his class. He was awarded with a private studio for his achievements. Point seven, after his graduation he held his first exhibition at the Gallery Cuppers, Cologne. It encompassed a year's work and made an extensive six-month tour of Western Europe. In 1962 Geba Christos returned to Ethiopia and introduced his newly adopted style, Abstract Expressionism. Initially his work was criticized for abandoning more conventional styles, at the time the art scene in Ethiopia was steeped in traditionalism. Point nine, despite frequent criticism he continued to create and refine his style, at the time he was also a faculty member of the Fine Arts School at Addis Ababa University, where he taught poetry and art. Point three, his art was displayed in many further exhibitions, both in Ethiopia and abroad. Point one, oh, he held exhibitions in various countries such as West Germany, Greece, Senegal, Russia. India, Yugoslavia, Brazil and Ghana in an ambassadorial capacity. Desta was criticized for including European techniques in his artwork, rather than staying with traditional local methods. Point eight, however, he was also among the artists that enjoyed the patronage of Emperor Haile Selassie, who was trying to advance modernization of Ethiopia by promoting progressive ideas in education, art, and industry. In 1965 he received the Haile Selassie I Prize Trust Award for Fine Arts. The citation for this award praised him as an artist with outstanding creative and interpretive abilities and as the one who was largely responsible for introducing non-figurative art into his country. 7. Equals equals life in exile equals equals. After the overthrow of Emperor Haile Selassie in 1974, Geba Christos continued as a faculty member at Addis Abeba University while responding to the demands of the new military government, the Derg, to create propaganda material for political purposes. In 1978 while on an exhibition campaign to Kenya he defected and soon fled to Germany seeking asylum. The German government did not grant his request but in 1980 the United States granted him political asylum and he settled in Lawton, Oklahoma.
Life in exile was challenging he only had one solo exhibition in Lawton before he died in 1981 at the age of 50. Wasson Work Kozrov. Wasson Work Kozrov born 1952 is an Ethiopian painter and mixed media artist. Wasson, his professional name, was awarded his BFA from the School of Fine Arts in Addis Ababa in 1972, and received an MFA from Howard University in 1980.2. He is best known for his inventive renderings of the Amharic script, and he is the first Ethiopian-born contemporary artist to incorporate these script symbols as a core aesthetic element in fine art paintings. His recognizable, signature, emerges by distorting, elongating, dissecting, and reassembling the symbols as images. Amharic is derived from the ancient language Jerez and a major modern language of Ethiopia, is one of the few written systems indigenous to Africa. Wasson likes to examine the relationship between sound and color in art. He says jazz is especially important in his own creative process. Jazz improvisations underlie his compositions, animating them with rhythmic movements and emboldening his masterful use of color. Point three. Wasson's paintings, in his words, create a visible, interacting surface, like an icon available to everyone, it allows them to have dialogue, to take them into memory. Wasson explained that he does not pre-sketch paintings, my process is inchoate and exploratory, the interplay of accident and intention, of mastery and uncertainty, of curiosity and discovery. Quick-drying acrylics allow me to easily build and destroy colors and figures on canvas. A major aspect of Wasson's works is that they present us with a challenge to look into the art, feel its effect, and to watch what happens. He paints from a place between mastery and uncertainty, and so the viewer too can approach his work to discover meanings that emerge through interaction. Wasson reflected on the effects of learning to see by viewing art in context of relationship between the risks of adolescence and the risks of art and stated, seeing differently, we then begin questioning our habits of mind and feel a new urge to create visions and images of what can be. 4. Wasson's works are in museum collections, including the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art DC, the Newark Museum, NJ, Neuberger Museum, NY, Indianapolis Museum of Art, in Birmingham Museum of Art, Al, Fowler Museum, UCLA, CA, Samuel P. Hahn Museum, FL, the National Museum, Addis Ababa, and in many international private and corporate collections. He exhibits widely in the U.S., and he works from his studio in Oakland, CA. Julie Meretu. Julie Meretu, born in 1970, is an American contemporary visual artist, well known for her multi-layered paintings of abstracted landscapes on a large scale. Her paintings, drawings, and prints depict the cumulative effects of urban socio-political changes through the landscape's alteration of architecture, topography, and iconography. Meretu was born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia in 1970, the first child of an Ethiopian college professor and an American teacher. They fled the country in 1977 to escape political turmoil and moved to East Lansing, Michigan, for her father's teaching position on economic geography at Michigan State University. 215 A graduate of East Lansing High School, Meretu received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Kalamazoo College in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and did a junior year abroad at Sheikh Anta Diop University UCAD, in Dhaka, Senegal, then attended the Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, Rhode Island, where she earned a Master of Fine Arts degree in 1997.31. Meretu's canvases incorporate elements from technical drawings of a variety of urban buildings and linear illustrations of urban efficiency, including city grids and weather charts. For the pieces do not contain any formal, consistent sense of depth, instead utilizing multiple points of view and perspective ratios to construct flattened reimaginings of city life. Five her drawings are similar to her paintings, with many layers forming complex, abstracted images of social interaction on the global scale. 6. The relatively smaller scale drawings are opportunities for exploration made during the time between paintings. Point 6. I think of my abstract mark making as a type of sign lexicon, signifier, or language for characters that hold identity and have social agency. The characters in my maps plotted, journeyed, evolved, and built civilizations. I charted, analyzed, and mapped their experience and development, their cities, their suburbs, their conflicts, and their wars. The paintings occurred in an intangible no place, a blank terrain, an abstracted map space. 
As I continued to work I needed a context for the marks, the characters. By combining many types of architectural plans and drawings I tried to create a metaphoric, tectonic view of structural history. I wanted to bring my drawing into time and place. Point seven. Imperial Instruction, Istanbul, 2004, exemplifies Meretu's use of layers in a city's history. Arabic lettering and forms that reference Arabic scripts scatter around the canvas. Point two in Stadia I, two, and three, 2004, Meretu conveys the cultural importance of the stadium through marks and layers of flat shape. Each stadia contains an architectural outline of a stadium, abstracted flags of the world, and references to corporate logos. Point eight. Magama. A painting in four parts 2012 the collective name for four monumental canvases that were included in Documenta 13, relates to Al Magama, the name of the all-purpose government building in Tahir Square, Cairo which was both instrumental in the 2011 revolution and architecturally symptomatic of Egypt's post-colonial past. The word, Magama, however, means, collective, in Arabic and historically, has been used to refer to a place that shares a mosque, a synagogue and a church and is a place of multi-faith. Point nine. A later work, The Round City, Hatshepsut, 2013, contains architectural traces of Baghdad, Iraq itself, its title referring to the historical name given to the city in ancient maps. Another painting, Insile 2013 built up from a photo image of Beliva's palace amid civilian buildings, activates its surface with painterly ink gestures, blurring and effacing the ruins beneath Point 10. While best known for large-scale abstract paintings, Meretu has experimented with prints since graduate school at the Rhode Island School of Design, where she was enrolled in the painting and printmaking program in the mid-1990s. Her exploration of printmaking began with etching. She has completed collaborative projects at professional printmaking studios across America, among them High Point Irons in Minneapolis, Crown Point Press in San Francisco, Gemini GEL in Los Angeles, and Derriere Le Toil Studios and Burnett Irons in New York City. Point one one. Meretu was a resident of the core program, Glassell School of Art, Museum of Fine Arts, Houston, 1997-98, and the Artist-in-Residence program at the Studio Museum in Harlem, 2001.12 During a residency at the Walker Art Center, Minneapolis, in 2003, she worked with 30 high school girls from East Africa. In 2007, she led a month-long residency program with 40 art students from Detroit Public High Schools. Point one three. In the spring of 2007, she was the Gunnar S. Mundheim Visual Arts Fellow at the American Academy in Berlin. Point one four. During her residency in Berlin, Meretu was commissioned to create seven paintings by the Deutsche Guggenheim. Title Grey Area 2008-2009, the series explores the urban landscape of Berlin as a historical site of generation and destruction. Point 2, 221 The painting Vanisseur, 2007, a black and white composition that depicts what appears to be a maelstrom of ink and acrylic marks, some of which are sanded away on the surface of the linen support, propelled a layering process of subtraction in the Grey Area series. Parts of Fragment 2008-09 and Middle Grey 2007-09 feature this erasing technique. Another in the series that was painted in Berlin, Berliner Platze 2008-09 holds a phantom presence of overlapped outlines of 19th-century German buildings that float as a translucent mass in the frame. Point one five. The art historian Sue Scott has this to say of the Grey Area series. In these somber, simplified tonal paintings, many of which were based on the facades of beautiful 19th-century buildings destroyed in World War II, one gets the sense of buildings in the process of disappearing, much like the history of the city she was depicting. 2. 221. In 2000, Meretu was awarded a grant from the Foundation for Contemporary Arts Grants to Artists Award. She was the recipient of the 2001 Penny McCall Award. Point one seven on September 20, 2005, she was named as one of the 2005 recipients of the MacArthur Fellowship, often referred to as the Genius Grant. 18. In 2007, while completing a residency at the American Academy in Berlin, Julie Meretu received the 15th commission of the Deutsche Bank and Solomon R. Guggenheim Foundation. The body of work she created, Grey Area, was composed of six large-scale paintings, completed between 2007 and 2009 in a studio in Berlin. 19. In 2013, Meretu was awarded the Barnett and Annalie Newman Award and in 2015 Meretu received the U.S. Department of State Medal of Arts from Secretary of State John Kerry. 20. Collections 
Meretu's works are held in the collections of the Minneapolis Institute of Art, 21 Museum of Modern Art, 22 Brooklyn Museum, 23 Carnegie Museum of Art, 24 Walker Art Center, 25 Studio Museum in Harlem, 26 and the San Diego Museum of Art.27. Although located in a private office building lobby, her 23. X80, mural commission for the new Goldman Sachs Tower in New York City, 2010, is viewable from the sidewalk windows.1. In 2016, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art commissioned Meretu to create a diptych, with each massive painting flanking the staircase in the atrium which is accessible and free to the public. Howell. Eon I, too, was first exhibited to the public on September 2, 2017, and the SFMOMA plans to display the paintings for at least three years. Each canvas is 27 by 32 feet and considered one of the largest contemporary art pieces. To facilitate the creation of the scale of the diptych, Meretu used a decommissioned church in Harlem as her studio to create. Throughout the creation of her piece, she collaborated with jazz pianist Jason Moran.2829 Howell. Eon I, too, is a political commentary on the history of the western United States landscape, including the San Francisco Bay Area. The foundation of each work contains digitally abstracted photos from recent race riots, street protests, and 19th-century images of the American West.30. In 2001, Meretu participated in the exhibition painting at the edge of the world at the Walker Art Center. She later was one of 38 artists whose work was exhibited in the 2004-5 Carnegie International, a final look.31 She has participated in numerous group exhibitions, including one at the Center for Curatorial Studies, Bard College, Annandale on Hudson, 2000. Her work has appeared in freestyle at the Studio Museum in Harlem, 2001, The Americans at the Barbican Gallery in London, 2001, White Cube Gallery in London, 2002, 32, The Pusan Biennale in Korea, 2002, The Eighth Baltic Triennial in Vilnius, Lithuania, 2002, and Drawing Now, Eight Propositions, 2002, at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Meretu's work was also included in the In Praise of Doubt exhibition at the Palazzo Grassi in Venice in the summer of 2011 as well as Documenta 13 in Castle in 2012. In 2014, she participated in The Divine Comedy. Heaven. Purgatory and Hell revisited by contemporary African artists curated by Simon and Jimmy. Meretu is represented by Marion Goodman Gallery in New York and by White Cube in London 33 as well as by Carlier Gebauer in Berlin.34. Meretu's painting untitled One Sold for $1.02 million at Sotheby's in September 2010.35 Its estimated value had been $600-$800,000 and 36 cents at Art Basel in 2014. White Cube sold Meretu's Mumbo Jumbo, 2008, for $5,000.37. In 2005, Meretu's work was the object of the Lehman v. The Project Worldwide case before the New York Supreme Court, the first case brought by a collector regarding their right to secure primary access to contemporary art. Point three eight. The case involved legal issues over her work and the right of first refusal contracts between her then gallery and a collector. Point three nine. In return for a $75,000 loan by the collector Jean Pierre Lehman to the Project Gallery, made in February 2001, the gallery was to give Lehman a right of first refusal on any work by any artist the gallery represented and at a 30% discount until the loan was repaid. Lehman saw this loan as direct access to Meretu's work, however, there were four other individuals who were also given right of first choice from the gallery's represented artists. 0 the gallery sold 40 works by Meretu during the period of the contract, with some offered for discounts of up to 40%.38 Lehman saw that several Meretu pieces available in the catalogue of the Walker Art Center had been sold to collector Jean Greenberg Rohatton, and suspected that the agreement was not being kept.41 He subsequently wrote Hay demanding $17,500. And, after no offer of Meretu pieces was made, he filed suit.41 The case, eventually won by Lehman, revealed to a wider public precisely what prices and discounts galleries offer various collectors on paintings by Meretu and other contemporary artists' information normally concealed by the art world.38.